Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Ed, aka Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, welcome again to another podcast episode of the Geek Home World. This is part of our series. We're on part number four of five podcast episodes in our Oscars 90 or Oscars 2018 series here. And we're getting to the big ones now. If you have not checked out our previous podcast episodes, they're about 15-ish, 20-ish minutes long and um, short and sweet, and we get to the point, and that's what we're trying to do here. But uh, you can check them out at geekhomeworld.libsyn.com or on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. S- I'm joined, I'm sorry, uh, with Scott Shriver here. Oh, I'm here? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, okay. I I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was here. Because okay. there's so much we <laughs> want to talk about in this one. I'm, I'm just skipping ahead. I forgot to introduce you, and I apologize. That, that's quite all right. I'm happy to be here, Ed. Yes. Um, and so we please check out um, our blog. And Scott's writing some very detailed blog posts each day leading up to the Oscars at geekhomeworld.blogspot.com. And then he'll be back after, at some point after the Academy Awards to see what we picked and what won and what didn't and what we think and all that good fun stuff. And we want to hear what you have to say, so hit us up at Geek Home World on Twitter if you want to. That, that'll be awesome. Today, tonight... This very moment, we're talking part four here on acting. These are the big awards. We're getting into the big ones. Acting. Acting. Yes. <laughs> John Lovitz, Robert. I love it. Um, <laughs> All righty. The first one, best performance by an actor in a supporting role. The nominees are Christopher Plummer, Richard Jenkins, Sam Rockwell, William Defoe, and Woody Harrelson. Yeah, so we've got Christopher Plummer in All the Money in the World. This is the film that Kevin Spacey was edited out of. So, And this is the, the Academy's one shot at saying, we're going to recognize that. And Christopher Plummer was very good in it. And, you know, it was kind of amazing that he did it in the short yeah. time that he did and, and whatnot. So, but uh, it, it's, uh, it is kind of interesting that they, they nominated Plummer here. He's won once before for the film Beginners, and he was also nominated for The Last Station. He's, you know, a tre- you know one of the acting treasures out there, obviously, and that's why he was chosen for all the money in the world. I think there could be something kind of political with me, too, and all that, you know, or, of course, you know, an anti... I hate to say an anti-spacey wave or movement here, you know, and and the fact that Christopher Plummer came into this movie and did such a wonderful job with it is is amazing, and and he should be commended. And also, it could be looked at as maybe a lifetime achievement award in a way, you know. There's there's ways you can spin it. But I do think it stops at the nomination. I don't think he has a shot at winning. winning. I think that it's kind of this token nomination where it's like, hey, we're going to recognize yeah. that film and what Ridley Scott and Christopher Plummer and you know everybody else did to make it right. <laughs> You know, as much as they could. And then um, you have Richard Jenkins in The Shape of Water. Uh, uh, first of all, um, let's make sure everybody knows what films these Yes, I'm did. sorry. Sam Rockwell was in Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, as was Woody Harrelson and Willem Dafoe for a little known film called The Florida Project. Yeah. But could, could it be Dafoe's time? I don't think so. Um, I think that. Uh, his performance in this is so different from what he's done, though, and I think that's right. why he's getting recognized. He's mm-hmm. like this benevolent uh, hotel uh, manager right. that befriends these kids, and it's just, you know, it's a far cry from his other two um, Oscar nominated performances, among other things. He did Shadow of a Vampire and Platoon, and he, I mean, they couldn't be more different roles. He's William Defoe. he's the Green Goblin. <laughs> the Green Goblin. Guild so, Spider-Man. you know, I. I I I don't think it's him. Um, I don't either. I think Sam Rockwell has this locked up. It's a possibility. I mean, three billboards has won a, a slew of awards, you know, and 
it's a possibility there. Um, I just think that he plays the character that but, ha- has a little bit of redemption, and it's mm-hmm. you know, it's both um, you, infuriating to watch him, but also you don't humorous. Think- I mean, it, it's I, th- I think he's finally hit hit the. The, the jackpot here. Where he's he been so be. good. Like the films like Moon, Confessions of a Dangerous Moon Mind. Moon was a very good. Oh, yeah. Very good Seven film. Psychopaths. He's been yeah. so good. And I think this is his year. I think I would personally vote for Richard Jenkins out of these five for The Shape of Water. I think his his character is so essential to that plot. And it's, and it's so. Right. If it's not believable, then it falls mm-hmm. apart the whole movie right but i i just think uh, this is rockwell's year well uh, something else you know i see sam rockwell and woody harrelson from three billboards and i wonder if they cancel each other out i don't think so i don't think that works um i don't think i don't think that works that mm-hmm. way with the, with it it's not like they're the same person true you know true, true. I, I don't think they'll cancel each other i, I think okay. sam rockwell and you don't takes throw, this you don't think they throw it to christopher Plummer? i don't i just don't? i just think okay. I honestly think that all four acting categories are locked up and won't be that interesting. I think that uh, I don't think there'll be any upsets in okay. these categories, unfortunately. Um, so we we got who we think will win. I kind of think Christopher Plummer. I'm just, but I could see it okay. definitely going the way you're saying. Sure. Um, did you want to talk snubs? For the uh, not in supporting actor. Let's let's okay, move okay. on to supporting actress. Okay, supporting actress. Um, we have Allison Janney for I Tanya. Yawn yawn yawn. Uh, Lori Metcalf for Lady Bird. Leslie Manville for Phantom Thread. Mary J. Blige for Mud Bound. There's my yawn yawn yawn. I know. I know. And Octavia Spencer, The Shape of Water. Okay. She's she, Octavia Spencer is awesome. Um, I would like to personally see Lori Metcalf because I, I like her so much. Mm-hmm. I would like to see her win it. Do I think she's going to win it for Lady Bird? I don't know. I feel like Lady Bird came out and it had all this great press. It had 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Absolutely. And, you know, but I feel like it's been kind of pushed to it the has back. Been. It has And it three looked, billboards seems to have eclipsed it, it, it in has. the forefront. I think uh, you may actually have the Oscars end without any awards going to Lady Bird, which is kind of sad. It's it's certainly one of the best films of the year, right. but it could get shut out. Yeah. Um, so what is your... I don't think I, Tanya has a, a shot at anything. I, I don't... I didn't see the movie. I didn't really care to. I don't have an interest and I'm sure I've alienated some people there. I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing. Please don't crack me in the knee. You're dead wrong. I could be <laughs> I could be dead wrong and tell because, you can tell me at Geekom or why no, I'm dead wrong. <laughs> I'm I'm not saying that your opinion doesn't matter, but mm. you have <laughs> but first of all, <laughs> if you haven't seen the film, I just I you can't really say that. <laughs> I I don't know. I lived through when all that happened. I I've, I just didn't really care to relive it. <laughs> I get it. I think it's a fascinating story. Um, but I think, I think Lady it is Bird's so more well original. Done. I just think that that just feels more earthy. It feels sure. more, you know. Yeah, now, but we're talking about here. We're talking about performances, though. Yeah, Allison Janney is. It is another one that it's so different. But I'm telling you right now, she's a lock to win. You're wrong. <laughs> she's going to win the supporting actress Oscar. Hmm. Locked. Allison Janney's got it. I think so. I think the only person, and as you said, the one you want to win, Lori Metcalf. I think she's the only person that could upset her. Um, I don't think mm. uh, the others have a shot. Uh, I know Mary J. Blige. It, it would be something if she won, but no um, chance. Sorry, but I no don't. Chance. I don't. I don't. I think it's. It would be a shock, but it would be an awesome shock. I, I'd be happy for her, but I don't know oh, if yeah, I sure, would. Absolutely. You know, agree yeah, with. Yeah, I just. I just don't see it. I think that. Uh, if you had seen Janie's performance, you would you would just okay. I, and I don't mean to no to, no to I get what you're that. saying. I just think that she it's so so well done and it's she is a you know I hate using this term but she's a tour de force in this like she steals every scene and, and she knows she'll crack you in the knee. <laughs> well, of course she will. But um, well, no, she didn't do that. I uh, know she had no prior knowledge. Exactly, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, allegedly. One, right? And then I have a couple of notes sure, here. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I think my my biggest snub of the year 
Oh, we're doing okay. It, for supporting actress um, is Hong Chow for downsizing. I know a lot of people didn't see this movie, but she is someone that steals the show. That was too. an interesting concept of. A I movie. love the concept, and but and I'll admit I when I was watching yet. the film. The first 45 minutes, I'm like, oh, my God, where's this going? Let's get somewhere. And then Hong Chow comes on the screen and o- takes over the film. Right, and right. it's am- like she does an amazing job. Right. So, you- so I think she should have been nominated. In fact, I probably would have voted for her to win. Wow. But So I'm kind of upset she's not nominated. But I'm okay with this, this list. One cool fact here. This is the first time all the nominees in this category are older than 45. Interesting. Um, it is a, it is a landmark, you know, moment for act, you know, when actresses. for actresses, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, for to you know to say, hey, you know, we we've got careers, you know, we don't have a shelf life. So you had a snub for uh, supporting actress. What about supporting actor? Uh, you, you know, I are you? I, you no, don't have to have a snub. No, I, I'd I say just, we just uh, we move on. Uh, there's no. It was me. Yeah, I just thought Ed Susevich should have been nominated. But I agree. All right, let's move on to best actor in a leading role. Okay. Um, we've got the nominees are yeah the nominees are Daniel Day Lewis for Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out, Denzel Washington for Roman J Israel Esquire, Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour, and Timothy Chalamet for Call Me by Your Name. Now. Mm. Here's another. Again, I'm yeah, saying that all of these are locks. I'm I just just. Put it in and pin on your ballots. I'm telling you. Okay. Well, Gary Oldman is yes. walking away with this. Gary Oldman's got this one wrapped up. Um, would I like to um, see Daniel Day Lewis' last big movie, his last movie, get it for that? Yes. Yes, I would. But he's he would be uh, he would be my vote. I thread now. I think that he his performance here. Is the best, and I like. Don't get me wrong. I love Gary Oldman. I think he's an amazing actor. Right. I mean, you go back to films like State of Grace, and True Romance, and Hannibal. Like he's unrecognizable in Hannibal. Right, right. Amazing actor. This is only his second nomination, which is astounding. The other his one was Tinker Gordon. Taylor. Yeah, Commissioner Good Gordon. But his other nomination was Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, and it's yeah. like you think, wow, well, so he's not nominated for anything else. But you know, the the surprise or the upset for me could be Timothy Chalamet. Sh- <laughs> Chalamet. Chalamet. And he for call me by your name. He has the from what I've seen, he's the one gaining some momentum. He's the one that they're saying is in second behind Oldman. Um, I just think that people are saying, okay, Daniel Day-Lewis, but you, you know, are incredible. You know who's overdue? Denzel. And I almost feel like him doing a smaller film like that that didn't do so great at the box office. No. I almost feel like... And it is different than anything he's ever done. Yeah. He, he basically plays a character with like basically autism. Yeah. And he's, he's dressed frumpy. He's like slouched the whole time. It's just not how you usually see Denzel. So I get the Which nomination. Actor, yeah. And yeah. It, yeah, it's his eighth nomination. He's won twice already. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just don't see it happening. I think I think and, Gary Ullman still... Uh, Oldman. <laughs> yeah, Oldman. <laughs> uh, has it locked? Uh, I agree. You know, there could be some surprises, but I think he's got it locked. Um, no, yeah, I I just don't see it going any other way. Um, I think that Daniel Kaluuya is, that's a that's a cool nomination. Yeah. I think he got nominated for that one scene when he goes to the sunken place. The, right. other, the rest of it is not that remarkable, but, you know, he deserves it. I think Get Out was... A good performance, but it's not good enough to win when you put it right neck next and neck to with Oldman all Day of these. Lewis. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not so. your, I mean, a good movie, but not not so good agreed. We want Day Lewis to win, but Oldman's going to. I kind of want Oldman to win, but well, yeah, I would yeah, like well, Day yeah. Lewis to get it We're his not last time that. out. Yeah. Well, um, supposedly, but it's really supposedly his last time out. Allegedly, he can come back whenever he, he wants. Feels like come it. on, come back, Daniel. Yep. All right. Um, so, final category. Oh, was there any snubs for that? No. Let's let's no. go on to actress. Okay, let's do okay. best performance by an actress in a leading role. And, and the nominees we got are. Frances McDormand for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And her mouth. <laughs> and her mouth. Then we got Margot Robbie for I Tanya, Meryl Streep for The Post. Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water, and Shursa Ronan for Lady Bird. Now, 
I first of all, I will talk about my stu- snubs right off the bat. Okay, I have two here for sure. I thought Michelle Williams was incredible in All the Money in the World. Mm. I th- thought she was the lead in that. She carried it. She's right. phenomenal. And then Jas- Jessica Chastain for Molly's Game. I oh. just don't see how Chastain got overlooked here. Although when you look at the nominees, it's like who do you pull out? I mean, it's like it it it's so tough. All five are deserving. It's almost to where like for me, Meryl Streep is fifth um, because we're so used to seeing her be magnificent anyway. I, I say never count her out, but I was I wasn't blown away by her performance. Me neither. Um, me neither. Not at all. And and the role to me was more important than her performance in that role, if that makes sense. I feel no, it like, does. It's a, it's, and I think we'll talk about it a little more. I when feel we get, like when it's a chance for her picture. to say something about Trump. Uh, you know, I feel like it's an right. anti-Trump. Uh, I don't know. I don't no, know. and I think we can touch more on that when we talk about Best Picture and, right. and why the Post is nominated. Right. Um, but I will say uh, a little note here. This is. Meryl Streep's 21st nomination <laughs> that extends her acting um, record. So, you know, and she's only won three times, which is kind of funny to say she has three Oscars, but you know, it's like she's lost 18 times, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But she's then, like the Susan Lucci, of all my children days and so poppers. Yeah. And she finally won. So, and, so the only first time nominee here is Margot Robbie for I Tanya. She is magnificent in it. So, and and she actually learned how to figure skate for this role. Did she carry a bat? <laughs> no. Like in Suicide Squad again. <laughs> she had no prior knowledge okay. <laughs> of acting. Um of <laughs> The assault. The assault. The incident, as they call it in the, the film. Incident. But here, uh, the front runner, and again, I think another lock, is Frances McDormand. I think she's going to take away her second Oscar. She won for Fargo and nominated for she was this nominated is, for Mississippi Burning, Almost Famous, North wow. Country. But now, I, I think in her fifth nomination, she takes home a second one. People just love the caustic, uh, <laughs> her caustic mouth in this. Yeah, and they some just, people, but it is polarizing. Some people don't Golden like Globe it. Worthy and and you know um, and how do you pronounce? Help me with that first name. Sersha. Sersha Roman. Good Irish for Lady name. Bird. Yeah, I think that's my pick. I, I'm for really Lady torn Bird. here, and I can't like I. On my page, I've circled each one that I want to win, that I would vote for. I haven't circled one in actress. But like I can't I, decide. Like I said earlier, that I feel like Lady Bird came out and then Three Billboards came out and just overshadowed it. And I think that her performance was lost and, yeah. and the overall momentum of that was lost yeah. in, in the shadow of... And sh- Three billboards. She really is an incredible young actress. Yes. She was nominated when she was like 12 when wow. she did at- Atonement. Okay. And then was nominated again for Brooklyn um, a couple yeah. of years ago. Uh, she's fantastic in other films like Hannah and The Lovely Bones. And she already has this amazing resume when she's like, you know, in her late 20s. So I have to ask no Sally Hawkins for Shape of Water, no chance. <sighs> You know, I just think that McDormand has it locked up. Okay. I, I have a hard time. I kind of feel that I, way. I can't. Even though I, like, I want I've been going back and forth on who Lady I Bird think is number one. Like, but Sally Hawkins is is right there because she plays a mute character. Mm-hmm. She she has one scene where she speaks. So she that would be hard for me to play a mute character. Yeah, it would be really hard for you. But she <laughs> she yes she. She has to convey all these emotions in a romance while not saying a word, and she does it really well. It's right. it's it's so beautiful. So, I I I would think you know if she were to steal it, I would be okay with it. But again, yeah. I think it's McDormand's to lose. I, I have to agree with you, but even even though I kind of I, I want Ronan to get it, I really I really feel like she deserves it. So is it? And we already had a snub for that. Okay. So is there anything else you'd like to add? No, sir. I think that wraps up the acting categories, and we're all right. Well, this was part four, talking about acting. Um, so acting, yeah, I have to keep saying it. So please check out our episodes. Uh, we've got one more to do. It's uh, part five, and it's going to be focusing on the top awards: uh, best director, screenplay, best picture. So you're going to want to definitely check that out. So. Thank you for joining us, um, and we'll see you on the next episode.
Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+. Plus. Follow and interact with us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes and leave a review, subscribe to us on YouTube, read our thoughts on Blogger. See you again on the Geek Homeworld. Yeah.